For full episodes of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, check the links in the description below. The full video version is available on the main channel, and the audio version is available on your favorite streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. Uh, continuing on, Vince Staples. He was recently on the Drink Champs podcast, and he revealed his relationship with Mac Miller, rest in peace. Um, and he said that basically Mac Miller was the one that believed him, believed in him and didn't take any publishing royalties from him at all. So this is dope. Uh, going over the article, he said, I wasn't really making music at that time. Vince started off. Earl Sweatshirt had came back and I was just, you know, moving around with him, making sure, you know, he was straight and shit. And I introduced myself to him and was like, I know who you are. Why don't you? He says, I know who you are. Why don't you make beats or whatever? Why don't you make music? And I say, I don't got no beats. And he's like, all right, I'm making some beats. Come over here on Friday. And then that's how we ended up making music and being cool. Now that's dope of Mac Miller to do. Mac Miller's actually an artist at the time, decently big at the time in 2013. And Vince Staples really wasn't doing anything with music. And he had invited him to make beats with him at his own studio, which is dope of Mac Miller to do. Uh, most people wouldn't do that. Vince says the relationship continued to blossom over the years and revealed Mac gave him the ultimate gift of ownership in 2013 after producing his breakout hit or his breakout uh, stolen youth LP mixtape. He continues on and says, and then he took me on tour and didn't want no publishing, Vince revealed. He said, if you make a million dollars, buy me an S-Class Benz or something like that. The whole project, Stolen Youth, he gave me ownership of it. He just said, if you make a gang of money, just give me like an S-class. And then took me on the road and paid for my room and board and still paid me. So yeah, you know that was the homie. Now, that's honestly, when you hear of stories of Mac Miller, that's the type of stuff you hear. It's like genuine things. Him just genuinely vibing with people, fucking with people, and loving um, being around people. Like a lot of the times people are saying he was the one that was giving out energy. Kendrick, when he tells the story of Mac Miller, he always says like, Mac was the one that was always happy, giving out great energy and joking around a lot. And here's the same thing. You know, he actually gave ownership to Vince Staples. He could have easily been like, hey, I'm the more established artist right now. I could easily, like most artists would fuck somebody over at that position. Um, speaking of getting fucked over, there's an interview done a while ago by Joe Budden where Black talks about, you know, uh, the Black, uh, the six, his name is Black, but it's like six L-A-C-K, uh, that r and an artist. Uh, he talks about how he was around Flowrider for three to four years and didn't get paid a penny. He was flat broke, could barely eat. That's a story of somebody getting, you know, somebody of higher position in the music industry taking advantage of a newer artist. That happens in the music industry. A lot of shady people, but when you hear stories like this, it gives hope that there are good people in the music industry. And Mac Miller was clearly one of them by doing this. Um, he said the 27 year old went on to acknowledge how instrumental Mac Miller's friendship and support was for him during his first critical years starting out as an artist. He said, he did more for me. And it's honestly like as far as in the time of my life when I needed it the most, uh, because you got to think at that point, I already put out two music projects, two music projects out and it, it, what well, I'm fucking this all up. And it wasn't really, I wasn't really fucking with it. And I was like, I'm going to go back to what I know type shit. And my cousin just got shot. He almost died. So that turned it up all the way for me. You know, my focus wasn't on music at all. So yeah, um, dope interview. Go ahead and check it out. A uh, long, long interview, roughly two, two hours, a little over two hours long, uh, great stories and just dope thing for uh, Mac Miller to do for somebody.